Hi guys, Harun here from Enterprise DNA, and I'm bringing you the solution for problem of the week number 10. So, um, I think I even said in my question now that this wasn't an overly difficult challenge, but it was quite a niggly one that, you know, sometimes throw, throws up a few little curveballs that, that you just need to be aware of um, in terms of dealing with time in, in Power BI. Um, ju just to remind you, so it was basically pick a date but also be able to select a start time and an end time for that particular period. Um, and it was a DAX only challenge. Um, and reviewing some of the entries, um, you know, um, absolutely spot on. So some of the experts provided some excellent solutions. Um, I really liked uh, Jose's um, approach to it. Um, very clever use of uh, variables, uh, very clean and tidy as well. Um, I think that was for, for his colors, but his actual um, code was it was exactly the same, very, very clean. Um, Greg Greg's approach was, was probably most similar to, to mine in, in terms of, you know, splitting out the start time and end time and, and having two separate tables. Um, whereas I think um, Jose had actually just, just used one. Um, I think Alex was his, was another nice um, nice entry. Um, again, doing variables, and he'd also actually used a um, computed table in there as well. Um, so definitely, definitely check check out. Um, I, I think Alex's and and um, Jose's were were my um, two 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 favourites, um, and definitely stuff I I learned from from both of them. Um, but if I just walk walk you through um, my solution, so. I think step one was just separating out the end time and the start time. So if I just change the header on this, so um, and all, and all I genuinely did for, for these was just a generate series um, one between twenty three uh, twenty four, um, and that one's going to basically allow us to harvest that selection into into our DAX calculation. So just to make it clear. And what we wanted to be able to do is, uh, I know there wasn't much data in there, but what we wanted to be able to do is just say, okay, for, for the 20th, between the 20th, for, I think it's just April day on there, so, so 25th and the 23rd, uh, I then want to be able to pick a start time, so that start time should should be, you know, starting at five o'clock on, on the twenty third, and it's ending at two o'clock on the twenty fifth, and then as you can see there, the the results were were updating. Um, so as I said, the fir the first step was just literally setting up these filters. So it was creating my end time and start time table, um, and yeah, I I just literally just used the um, home uh, so was it that one? new parameter um, and generated the series uh, won't go into that now um, and then it was just a simple sum of the customer count because that, that, that was what we were trying to work out um, and then if I actually step into the customers between the times so what I did is uh, I started with the, so what's the date selected? So the maximum date. So, you know, harvesting that first bit. Uh, again, with the min, you know, to, to find out what was the smallest and what were the biggest. So, so that's what the min and max were doing there. Um, and it was then to, to actually just get the time um, for, from that first one. So, so from the hour table. Um, and the same same for the end time. So the min and the max were basically giving giving us uh, the start and the end times. Um, and then I just combined them. So I was combining the start date with the start time and the end date with, with the end time. And then after that, it, it really was just a simple plugin, plugging it in uh, into a simple calculate. So I took the total customers, uh, filtered my fact customer count and then actually I wanted the start date time to be less than or greater than the start date time and less than or equal to the end date time um, and, and that was what all that was the ask for the, for the first bit of the calculation really so I think one of the niggles that I did spot and I kind of talked through with Brian was um, just being careful in terms of what was selected here um, 
Uh, and I think that if what depending on the way you set up your your, your additional timetable slash you know the the hour table to to get the filter context, it was um, so some of these interactions get, gave you some some funky looking results. Um, I wasn't able to dig into it enough, uh, and maybe Brian can can shed some more light um, in the comments, but. Basically, we, we found that if you don't select less than uh, or greater than or equal to in the first one for your start time and less than or equal to in the end time, you are getting some quite dubious results. Um, so ho hopefully Brian can shed some more light as he was doing some, some digging into that um, as to what, what was going on there. But um, it worked for me and, and, and I'd kind of set it up like that anyway. So uh, be interesting to, to hear what, what was what was the cause of that? Um, the second ask work was to actually just bring in the weekdays. Um, and I think it's just been made super easy at the minute because of the absolutely amazing um, date table from, from the resident expert, uh, M resident expert, Melissa. Um, yeah, I, I think before you'd have been struggling and working out, you know, which, which are your weekdays, which aren't, but I think with our new farm love for, for this absolutely amazing data, it just literally covers everything you, you, you could think of, even if you have custom financial years, everything. like you, You've got the offsets there, everything. So a very, very powerful table. And, and it just makes so much so much of your ducks easier to, to write and, and even understand. So a massive thank you once again to, once again to Melissa. Um, and I think that that's all for me, folks. Um, see you on the next one. Thanks all. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. Uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.